Okay, addition and subtraction with scientific notation. As you'll probably remember, each number that's written in scientific notation has two parts. This, which we can call the coefficient, or the mantissa, and this 10 raised to an exponent, we can just call the power. When we do addition and subtraction problems with scientific notation, we hope so hard that the powers are the same because it makes the problem much easier. But if they're not the same, it isn't the end of the world. I'll show you how to solve those problems, too. Let's look at this. It's an addition problem. In this case, the first thing I always want to look at is the powers. And since they're the same, 10 to the fifth in both cases, I'm set. Here's all I have to do. I take the coefficients, and since this is addition, I add them together. 3.769 plus 4.21, these two guys. And I do that math. And now, since the powers were the same, all I do is bring this power down, 10 to the fifth, and use it in my final answer. Simple as that. So my answer is 7.979 times 10 to the fifth. All I have to do is do the math, and then I just bring down 10 raised to the exponent. Here's a subtraction problem. I'm not even going to go through the whole thing because I think it's so easy. I just look at the powers here. They're the same. So all I have to do is the subtraction. 8.14 minus 2.01. There's the answer. And then I take uh, 10 to the negative second. I pull it down here and reuse it in my final answer. I'm done. So you may be asking yourself, what do you do if the powers aren't the same? Like this example here. I have 10 to the fifth and I have 10 to the sixth. Well, I can't add these together until the powers are the same. So what I'm going to have to do is change around the exponents on one of these numbers so that both have the same exponent on 10. Now, how am I going to do this? You may remember these rules that we talked about earlier. If I move the decimal place right or left in a scientific notation number, that changes the exponent on 10. So we can reverse that. I can change this 10 to the fifth to 10 to the sixth by moving the decimal place to the left. Here's what I mean. I take the decimal place and I move it one spot here to get 0.758. Well, according to our rules, when I move the decimal place to the left, the exponent on 10 gets bigger. So I moved it one spot to the left, which means that the exponent is going to be bumped up from 10 to the fifth to 10 to the sixth. So moving the decimal place one spot to the left now gives me two numbers that have the same power. So now I can go ahead and add them, just like I did earlier. So I'll do 2.871 plus 0.758. Add these together. Three point six two nine. 10 to the 6th in both cases, so I just bring it down and reuse it. Now, as an aside, your teacher may be asking you to round your answers using significant figures. I'm not rounding using significant figures here, but if your teacher is asking you to do that, watch my video on uh, significant figures rounding for addition and subtraction as well as significant figures rounding for scientific notation. Um, but just keep in mind that I'm not following those rounding rules here. Here's another example. We have 10 to the negative eighth, 10 to the negative tenth. In order to subtract them in this case, I'm going to have to rearrange some decimal places so that the exponents are the same. Well, I can do the same thing that I did earlier. If I move this decimal place to the left, it can bump up the exponent on 10. So I can go from negative 10, negative 9, to negative 8, up to by moving this to the left two spots. So my new number is going to be 0 0.0572. And since it was over 2 to the left, it will be up to on 10 times 10 to the negative 8th. Now both of their powers are the same. So since this is a subtraction problem, I'll just go ahead and subtract the numbers. So I have 
seven eight five minus point O five seven two. Do that math. There's the answer for the first part. And now I just take 10 to the 8th and bring it down here for my final answer. And there we have it. We're done. Now, another problem that people sometimes have when they're adding or subtracting scientific notation is they get a final answer that is not written correctly according to the rules of scientific notation. Let me show you what I mean. Let's take this example. Well, we're in luck in one sense. Because when we look at this, the powers are the same. So all I have to do is a subtraction. I don't have to worry about moving the decimal place to get exponents that are the same on 10. So take 4.86 and subtract 4.72. And I get 0.14. So I could write an answer like this. 0.14 times, bring this down, 10 to the third. But that can't be my final answer. Here's why. Scientific notation, as you may remember, always needs to be written with one number, one digit, to the left of the decimal place. Then you have the decimal point, And then you have everything coming after it. Here, we don't have anything to the left of the decimal place. So it's not written correctly. What is 0.14? I want to write as 1.4. That would then be correct. So in order to change 0.14 to 1.4, I want to move the decimal place over one spot to the right. When we move the decimal to the right, according to this rule, the exponent on 10 goes down. I moved it one spot, so it's going to go down 1 from 10 to the third to 10 to the second. So 1.4 times 10 to the second, that now is written in correct scientific notation, and that is how we do addition and subtraction.